Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what I am going to be doing is looking at 10 more awesome Linux terminal applications and utilities. The reason why I say more is because this is actually a continuation to a video I uploaded back in November where I went over my seven favorite Linux terminal applications. So this is 10 more that are awesome. You should check out, install on your system and go ahead and play around with. So without wasting too much time, we're on our system here. We're gonna go with the first one. And the first one is an alternative to the cat command. Now cat is a simple command that will basically just read out a text file. So if I do cat.bashrc, enter, you can see that this is my current configuration for bashrc. Now it's nice that it can do this, but it's not really giving us the information or all the information that it could give us. Now that is where bat comes in handy because if I do the same command but with bat and type in bash rc, you can see that it is giving us all the proper syntax highlighting. It's giving us the numbers so we can see exactly what line we are looking at. Overall, it's much better than just running the basic bat command. Now, this obviously isn't gonna be a guide for every single specific one. I'm just quickly highlighting these. But if you do want more information on the various things we look at in this video, there'll be links down below to either GitHub pages, other videos, things like that. And that takes us to number two, which is FFmpeg. I've been using this quite a bit as of recent to go ahead and convert videos to proper formats so I could use it in DaVinci Resolve. And not only have I been using it, but NASA used FFmpeg during their trip to Mars so they could go ahead and transcode and compress the video data. So that's just a little cool something to go ahead and mention. And FFmpeg is awesome. If I go ahead and bring in a graphical file browser in here, this is how I've personally been using it. If I go over to my videos folder, go over to convert, uh, you can see I have a couple different media files here, but I also have these sh files. If I go ahead and open up one of these with a text editor, and then bring that on in, you can see that I am using an ffmpeg command to go ahead and convert this from a mp4 to an mov file, so I could go ahead and use this in DaVinci Resolve. Now, ffmpeg can be used for a lot of different things beyond typical uh, file conversion. Uh, other than converting it to various formats, you could do it or use it to do things such as screen recording and really a lot more. If I went and did a ffmpeg-h, hit enter, you could see all these different settings and tags and everything that is available for us to go ahead and use. Uh, with most of these commands and most of these utilities that we're gonna be looking over, if you type the command dash h, it will usually give you a help page so you can see everything that you could go ahead and actually do. So speaking of conversion tools, at number three, we have Convert by Image Magic. And before this tool, a lot of the times what I would do to actually convert images is go ahead and do it in GIMP. Now, one of the reasons why I need to convert images is because uh, YouTube thumbnails, they do not like PNGs or any files over more than I think two megabytes. So before I would open up the PNG like this because that's how I prefer to save my thumbnails, I'd have to go file, export as, and then switch this to a JPEG and compress it out differently. So to actually go ahead and use this tool, all you would want to type in is magic convert the file name, making sure that you're in the same directory or working directory as that file, and then the new file name. And for this, I went thumb underscore nextcloud.jpg. So if we go ahead, kind of open this up off to the side so you could see, see it work, hit enter, and you can see this new JPEG forming right here. And it is essentially the exact same thing. But the main difference is, and why I do this for YouTube, is you can see this is 4.3 megabytes and this JPEG is 800 kilobytes. So now it is usable as a thumbnail. Drag and drop that in here. And if I look in between the two, you could say there's absolutely no uh, deterioration in the quality. But if you wanted to, you could actually deteriorate the quality if you'd want to. There are tons of different options and commands with this magic convert tool. And like I said, there'll be a link down below. And this takes us to utility number four. Uh, we've all heard of NeoFetch here. NeoFetch is absolutely one of my favorite little tools. Provides no actual function other than giving you some information about your system and it just looks cool. This isn't what I'm talking about. 
what I'm talking about is CPU fetch. Right here under CPU, you could see it gives us just a little bit of information. It gives us our model, brand model name, and our core count. But if I type in CPU fetch, it gives us a lot more information, including that little ASCII graphic right here for our specific model or for our specific brand. And here we can see it gives us the name of our CPU, which this is basically all it gave us over here. So everything below that is new. It's a Zen 2, 7 nanometers, you can see the cores, the max frequency, etc. So this is a really cool tool to give you a lot more information on your CPU. Now next up is a little tool called GDU. What this is, is a disk usage analyzer. And it works great. Uh, if I type GDU right here, or if I type it incorrectly, hit enter, you can see I was started in my home directory, so this is where it's going to go ahead and put me but I can actually go through my entire home directory and see where the most data or the most storage is being used up. So you can see here under my videos folder, I'm using 57 gigabytes in there. So if I was really curious to why I would go in, I can see that the Cutefish project is 52 gigabytes and it's primarily because of these two MOV files here. So if I was running low on space on my system, it'd be really nice just to go ahead and shuffle through here. And I'm just using the arrow keys. If you're used to Vim, you could actually use those Vim keys to go ahead and shuffle through. Also, if you go ahead and hit the question mark button, it'll give you a little help page so you can see uh, how to go ahead and delete things through here, how to navigate, how to rescan current directories, get information on specific items and things like that. Go ahead and hit control C to get out of there. And let's go dash H. This will bring up a help page. So you can actually do a lot more things. So for example, if I did dash D, this would show the disks on my system. And you can see I have my main drive here and I have a backup drive here. I have 1.4 terabytes used and 2.1 terabytes available. So I could actually go ahead and navigate that. You can see it did have to scan it really quickly there. It's the first time I opened this up with that disk drive. It actually took like 30 seconds or so to go ahead and scan everything. But now I could go ahead and go in here. You can see the Tekka HD folder is taking up most of the room. And that's primarily because this is where I go ahead and back up my projects. And you could see some of these newer projects that I have here are taking up a lot of room again because of those uh, MOV files. And if I went in here, I could see exactly what's going on. I could go under old and you could see a lot of my old videos. These are like the full and complete projects. So I could go in here and pull old uh, images, audio and things like that. But if I want to clear some room, I could see that some of these A-roll footages are taking up most of the room. So this is a really cool tool to go ahead and check up on your disk usage. Now the next thing that we're going to go ahead and look at is something I actually covered in the past. What we're going to be doing is taking a look at a Linux terminal utility called LSD. And no, it's not that. What it is is an alternative to your standard LS command. Now, LSD is awesome. So if we just type LSD, I haven't customized it or anything yet on this system, so it gives us the default uh, with the icons and all that. I do recommend you watch that video that you just saw that little snippet of. I go over how to customize this, how to get these icons within the terminal, and how to completely replace the LS command with LSD. But this overall just makes the actual listing of everything a lot prettier, a lot more customizable. Overall, it is a fantastic little tool. Now what we're going to cover is my favorite system monitor. This is another thing we covered in the past, but I figured it was one of my favorite things. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it in this video. And that is BPYTOP. Go ahead and open up BPYTOP and you can see it's a very similar to HTOP but it's a lot better laid out and it gives you a lot more information on your system. So you could see my CPU here, how much of it is being used. I have a screen recorder going, so it's gonna be a little bit higher than normal. Additionally, we have all my temperatures per core. We have our memory usage over here. We have our disk usage, our network usage, all of the different items in our kind of task manager processes in the background. And you could go ahead and flip through different things. Like if I type in a four, it takes that away. If I type two, it's going to take that away. So we can really narrow in and remove things, change things around. And it's moderately customizable. If we go up here to the menu, you can go to options. You can change the default colors, the update time, the background update. You, you have a lot of different things to change under your CPU. You could change what's there under memory. You could change what's there. It is a very customizable utility. And if you're looking for a rather pretty system monitor, it is definitely one of the things that you should consider. 
So for number eight, what we're going to do is go ahead and take a look at ASCII Image Converter. Uh, in the past, I took a look at the utility called JP2A, but that one hasn't been updated in a long time, and I've recently gotten this one to work. So first of all, if you're curious to what an ASCII image is, this right here, this little distribution logo, is technically an ASCII image. Now, what this will do is go ahead and get any image you have on your system and go ahead and convert it to this format. For example, I have an image, it's the uh, Tux PNG that I'm gonna be using a lot in the future. Uh, just to show you what it kind of looks like first, we can go ahead and actually open it up. This is my Tux.png right here. I'm gonna be putting that on a submerge, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and convert that to an ASCII. So to do that, you just type in ASCII image converter, and then you type in tux.png and then it will go ahead and convert. Luckily, there's a lot of different options that you can go ahead and add to make this a lot smaller, a lot more detail. But one of them, if I go ahead and do this and I type in dash dash colors, if I go ahead and add that, oh, not that one, I think it's just color. Go ahead and add that and it will make it a little bit more colorful. So if I highlight it, you can kind of see what's going on there. Uh, in the link in the description, I'll, it will show you all the different options you could do to go and make this a little bit more high quality. So another little example I have is the uh, Manjaro rounded logo. So if I go and do that, add the color tag, hit enter, you can see that is a fairly good looking uh, Manjaro logo there. And the cool thing about this too is if I go ahead and copy it, let's go ahead and bring in a uh, text editor paste that in, you can see that it actually keeps its formatting, so you could go ahead and copy and paste this other places. So overall, it's just a pretty cool little utility. So coming in at number nine, we have Speed Test CL. Now this saves from go, having to go to those like speed test websites that are completely full of ads and all that. You can just throw open the terminal and go ahead and do this very easily. And this is just done with Speed Test, and that's it. So you hit enter, and then it's gonna go ahead, run through, and actually test both your download and upload speed. So once it's done, it will give you everything. You can see my current download and upload speed. And that's really about it. Of course, there are other options. So if I do dash H, you go ahead and pick specific servers, change URLs, give lists, things like that. There's a lot more actual options here, but for just simple, quick testing, throw open your terminal, type speed test, and you're good to go. Now the next tool we have and coming in at number 10 is probably one of the most important and most critical things that you should have in your Unix based operating system. And that is LOL cat. So if you type in LOL cat go dash H, you could get the help page for everything that you could do within LOL cat, but its usage is very simple. Uh, for example, let's go back and do that speed test. And if we just go ahead and add LOL cat to it, what this is going to do is give us a little bit more rainbow. It completely makes uh, boring tasks and things that would be just too simple to look at absolutely beautiful. It's just one of those things you absolutely need on your system. For example, LS, or let's even do LSD, and then we do, oh, I hit enter too soon. It's not, it's not proper. So what we need to do is add LOL cat to it, and that will completely beautify that command. Now, additionally, what we could do is add options. So one of the options is if I do dash A, hit enter, what that's gonna do is slowly read out to me what I have in my list, which makes it nicer, easier to read. It does the nice little rainbow color transfers. Overall, it is an absolutely fantastic utility. And I'll leave a link to the GitHub so you could go ahead and learn a little bit more about LOL Cat. <laughs> So what, I, what I'm gonna do to go ahead and end this video is go off on some honorable mentions. And it's primarily because these three utilities are gonna be the first things that are posted in the comments. The reason why I didn't go over these is because I don't, um, I haven't used them enough to be able to highlight them and spotlight them to actually know what I'm talking about. And those things are Vim. Vim is a wonderful text editor that thousands of people swear by. Uh, it's very easy to navigate. It is quick. If you're familiar with all the keyboard shortcuts, you could get a lot of work done very quick. Me, I'm somebody who uses Nano, so. Next up on honorable mentions is called Tmux. What it will do is allow you to split your terminal windows and do multiple things at once. It's another great utility. A lot of uh, terminal applications are actually uh, shipping out with this function, 
by default and that alone is very cool. But if you're interested in having tiling, basically tiling terminals within a terminal, Tmux is a great application to look at. And then the third is Midnight Commander. Midnight Commander is a wonderful terminal-based file explorer. Personally, I have more experience with Ranger, but uh, Midnight Commander also looks great. So those are three more to check out if you are interested. So with all that said, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're wanting even more, you could go ahead and check out my other video where I covered seven that I like. And that video has some honorable mentions as well that are kind of in the same category as a LOL cat, for example. Uh, with all that said, I would like to thank my YouTube members and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel, supporting the content I do. We have four people who are some pretty top tier Patreon supporters. We have Mitchell Valentino as an executive, and then we have three producers, uh, Timo, Anthony, Phil Mac, and Kyle. Thank you all so much for your support, and thank you to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, link in the description, or you just do it through YouTube and you get extra badges, emojis, things like that. So have a beautiful day and goodbye.